not all blues dancers are creeps. Okay, but just most of them. But most of the creeps are blues dancers. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kayla. And I'm Pete. And welcome to How I Hobby. We're two pals and hobby obsessives with over a hundred hobbies between us. And we're always on the lookout for more. Join us as we talk about all of our hobbies. And talk to people we know about their really cool hobbies. Welcome to How I Hobby. In today's episode, we've got a great interview with Dave Shaw, who has a very damp hobby. But before we do, mm -hmm. Pete, yeah, tell us, yeah, how do you hobby? I'll tell you how I hobby. I dance the Lindy Hop. Cool. Yeah. Oh my god, Pete, tell me more. Like, what is the Lindy Hop, and how did you get into it? Well, Lindy Hop is a uh, swing dance. It's yep. part of the swing dance family. Um, it started in like, the twenties, thirties, forties in uh, the Savoy Ballroom in Harlem. Oh wow! Uh, a bunch of uh, fantastic black dancers who later became known as Whitey's Lindy Hoppers. Okay, and they're. Absolutely fantastic. You may have seen, uh, if you've seen uh, the Marx Brothers film, The Day at the Races, okay. um, there is a great scene with Whitey's Lindy Hoppers doing this routine. It's a partner dance. It's related to like Charleston and jazz and tap, all these things. And when you tend to see it on film, there's a lot of throwing people around and like, you know, over the rings and through the legs and acrobatics, that kind of yeah. thing. Social dancing, that doesn't tend to happen so much because you, you know, kick someone in the head when you're doing it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's it's just a really fun, uh, vibrant, uh, vibrant dance to do. It's great. How would you get into it? Well, so I was a songwriter for years. Yeah. And uh, had my band and performing on stage and all this sort of business, but I never felt comfortable moving on stage. And I, like, you know... I, I knew that I was never going to be Prince or anything like that, but I wanted to be at least feel a little bit more comfortable in my body. So I thought, well, I I should learn some sort of dance. Mm. And with uh, Lindy Hop, um, the music is all this old swing music. So people like Chick Webb and Benny Goodman and uh, Count Basie, people like that. So I like the music mm. much more than, say, salsa, for example, which I'm not really a fan. So... We've Great. now lost all of our salsa audience. Nothing against salsa. Yeah. I'm just not particularly a fan of the Fair. music myself. Yeah. So I, I found a night that was that was near to me, and there are lots and lots of uh, places all over the country where you can uh, just go along as a complete beginner, they can show you a few moves, and then it's like a social thing afterwards where you just dance with whoever you dance with in the class or you mm -hmm. can dance with some strangers or whatever mm -hmm. and just get to know it like that that's so cool yeah, it was great i love it i've never met anyone that did the lindy hop i bet you have but they just haven't told you i hope that they all reveal themselves as this podcast yes. episode goes live messages on insta if you're into <laughs> lindy hop messages if you're friends with kayla and you're into lindy let us know yes i i definitely think this is something i would try um amazing pete thank you and now to our episode. We're here with Dave Shaw. Dave is a fantastic session drummer and musician based in Surrey. He plays with a superb band called Mr. Kanish. Do check them out. He is a lovely bloke. Can't wait for you to meet him. Uh, so, Dave, how do you hobby? I'm an angler. A fisherman. There you go. How long have you been fishing? No, I, I've been fishing now uh, probably over 30 years now. Wow. Yeah. So how did you get into it? Uh, well, my granddad was was a great angler. Um, so he he was like the first person that like sat me down and she, it was me and my brother and showed us, you know, how to set everything up. My nan, uh, she didn't fish, but bless her, she like fixed these bits of cane and bits of line to the end of a cane and fashion these little fishing rods for me and my brother to go and catch minnows so yeah had that kind of like little platform given to us by both sides of my grandparents so I'll, I'll always be grateful for that is there like a hierarchy dave when it comes to fishing like are fly fishermen you know are they, are they snooty about yeah are they about are they yeah meaner more competitive versus the kind of angling that you do I mean, in the type of fishing, I, I, I only fish for carp. So that's that's what I ah, target the okay. whole time. In in that circle, it can be quite um, secretive. Yeah. And there's there's definitely a fair bit of, of posing going on. We call them tackle tarts. You know, there's a lot of 
Uh, <laughs> tackle tarts. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Tackle tarts. Yeah. Tackle tarts. You tackle, look at him, he's all right. Yeah. Tackle tart. Okay. So, like, when you say secretive, does that mean, like, you know, so you, they're secretive about, like, best place to fish or the, you know, the, the methods that they use and all that kind of thing? Definitely, definitely, yeah. People don't want to give away uh, areas that are good, um, you know, and a lot of people will try and talk to you and they're just trying to glean information, you know, so. Um, <laughs> well, because that was going to be one of my questions is where do you do this? Because I know you're based south of London. So, I mean, mm -hmm. maybe it's a secret. Will you tell us where you angle? Uh, I, I generally um, look for areas where other anglers aren't present. Um, like so car parks and was it? Yeah. gyms, yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> but if you look on Google Maps, there's a lot of water. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, all around this fine <laughs> island. That's it. That's the tagline for the episode. There's a lot of water. Okay, Dave. We got to ask you: What has your hobby taught you about yourself or life? For me, I think what I've worked out because I have other hobbies that I do but th this one in particular is what makes it unique is I found it's the one thing that I do in my life that um I'm completely in the moment mm. and mm. uh you know like when I'm when I'm watching like a really big fish close up um there's no other thoughts that enter my mind for quite a period of time and that that experience um is so relaxing for me um i i can't get it from any other pursuit you know there's always other things that that pop in even if i'm having a good time whereas with angling um it's those long periods of of just being in the moment with no intrusive thoughts yeah that's lovely so i've got to ask what's your biggest catch yeah uh oh that's going back a bit um the biggest fish i caught was uh 33 pound uh um but that was that was back when i was uh, uh a teenager uh, and i had much more time on my hands yeah <laughs> that's crazy dave tell us why should people try your hobby give us the pitch in like 30 seconds you're on dragon's den uh, i would say to fishing um even if you took out the actual fishing part of it um what it gives you in terms of um an escapism from from modern life um is is worth all of those it's worth so much um even without the actual fishing part so if fishing isn't something that really interests you um uh, you know just the act of of going down to a river at, uh, at dawn uh with you know and brewing up a cup of tea and sitting and watching the dawn um nice. i'm sure most people listening to this would think that sounds beautiful and it and it is you know wow so that the, sounds amazing yeah I'm, I'll, I'll do that i would do that too what i love so much about what you've shared with us is that this is a family tradition that seems to be passed down generation to generation yeah and how you use it for such meditative purposes that is really really cool dave That's great yeah, yeah thank you so much fantastic but before we go, where can people find you on socials if they want to hire you for some drum tracks? Dave is a fantastic drummer, by the way, people. So, uh, yeah, yeah, and with a great recording setup. So where can people find you? Uh, well, uh, davidshawdrummer.com is my website. Uh, and then just David Shaw Drummer on the usual Insta or Facebook, all that. On all yeah. the balls. Fantastic. Super. We will put you up on there. Awesome stuff. So, yeah. Follow Dave. Follow uh, Dave. Lovely Ma bloke. Yeah. And yeah, try fishing. And if try you're not fishing. into fishing, I'm vegetarian, so I don't fish. Okay. But I do drink tea and I do read books. And so, you do sit by and water. And I do sit by water, so I'm totally going to try yeah. go getting down there. Either. I live near a river. I'm going to go down to the river tomorrow morning and uh, cool. with a book, pretend, chill out. Pretend you're fishing. I'm going to pretend I'm fishing. Vegetarian fishing. I'm yeah. Amazing. Well, thanks so much. Dave, it's been fantastic. Pleasure. See you, man. Bye. All right, that was our interview with Dave Shaw. Uh, we had a blast. Hope you did too. 
But before we go, we want to share this week's celebrity hobby. Drum roll. <laughs> Did you know Paris Hilton restores vintage radios? Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't That's have thought it. That's a cool one. She's really going up in my estimation, really. She's a dynamic human. She's a lot smarter than uh, people thought. I think so, too. She's okay. A, she's a cool kid. Amazing. Well, that's a wrap. Yeah. I've been Pete. And I've been Kayla. Rate reviewers wherever you get your podcast. It makes us much easier to find. And you can follow us on Instagram at How I Hobby. See you next time. Toodles. <laughs> How I Hobby was written and produced by Kayla Lean and Pete Faulkner, with music by Pete Faulkner, artwork by Laura Walsh, and animation by Kayla Lean. If you'd like to be featured on the pod, find us on Instagram or email us at howihobby at gmail.com.